Hello, I'm Laura Furiosi, divorce mother of three, and I'm here with my mother, Lynette Galvin, with 35 years' experience in family law. You're listening to the Divorce Course Podcast. Through our candid discussions, we hope to help you through your divorce or de facto separation. We will be answering the most commonly asked questions and covering the stages and steps that you will face on your way to freedom. We've heard the term gold digger many times, and usually it's stereotypically a woman at home with a very wealthy husband. For plot twist, this episode today is going to be about gold diggers when it is a very wealthy woman or another wealthy man with a man at home. Hello, Mum. Hello, Laura. Now, we've talked about this before, Mm. but we've never touched on it in a whole episode, but we've had people writing in begging us for this episode. Yes, yes. It's a real rise, isn't it, in that phenomenon? I mean, the court doesn't like to use the term gold digger, but it is a derisory kind of term that people, that lawyers used to sort of say and people would say about their ex. Yeah. Well, there's songs about it, so. Oh, yeah, that's true. There is. Do you want to sing it for us? (laughs) (laughs) No. Yeah. So, so, and, and it is, uh, it is a phenomenon I've noticed. Um, Mm. lately as women are working more and becoming more uh, higher in their careers and so forth does seem sometimes that their ex or their partner their ex-partner wasn't actually either pulling their weight or even trying to pull their weight so we've got a lot of uh, members who come along to our weekly q a's yes and there are some people and the and the theme seems to be Mm. the theme and I know you've like again we, we're not trying to insult anyone or hurt no. anyone we're writing we're doing this episode for anybody who is doing all the work making all the money and their ex or their partner or even they're separated in one roof is just sitting at home doing nothing mm. and people want to know how that's going to play out yeah in their property settlement yes because it can seem very unfair yeah and we're not we're not using this as the flip side of you are a stay-at-home mum who mm. does all the work no. and or a stay-at-home dad who does all the work, looks after the children. These are the people we're talking about that are doing everything, like literally everything, yeah. and they, their their partner is just sitting at home doing nothing. I think if you Google the words gold digger, yeah. uh, it would come up more with examples of, of women and um, yeah, being of alleged to be gold diggers of yeah. men. Yeah. Uh, I don't think it actually exists that much, no. but it is um, interesting a phenomenon, I think, that people, sometimes the women now, are feeling that they're doing, having the babies, working outside the home and still doing the majority of the house chores. Mm. And then when it comes to separation, how does that extra effort play in? Especially since when the Family Law Act was written, mm. 1976, mm. You know, I was very young, married, a 19-year-old at that stage, it was expected that I would stop work Mm. once I was married. So I actually went on to part-time work and everyone who was working part-time and married, all the women, would we're saving up for a house or something specific. Mm. Um, or as one old ba- one old lawyer um, said to me once, I had opened my own practice. I was 35, 36. I opened my own practice in a suburban area and I was at the court and chatting to another local solicitor. And he said, oh, it's all right for you. He said, you're just doing it for pin money. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I was solely responsible mm. uh, for four children at that point. So, yes, that was pretty wow. insulting. So now, so I love that that stereotype is fading yes but I, but it's not gone yes. so one of the ways to erase it is to look at the other side and go you know what it's not a stereotype of women mm. it can happen with men it's a personal mm. choice personal personality type so this episode will be useful for you whether you are a man or a woman mm. but we're looking at it particularly from that plot twist side of the gold digger yeah. technically is at the home and it is the male so we're going to be looking at ouster orders spousal maintenance child support if if they can go to work but they're not, and joint bank accounts, and what are your obligations, and how can your extra contributions be recognised? So let's get into it. Okay. Sorry, Ma. That's all right. Okay. All right. So number one, let's just get into the that question that you raise. How can, if you are the one who's doing all the work, looking after the kids, doing everything, and perhaps maybe it sounds like a coercive control relationship. Could well be. How can you prove all your contributions are way firing out weighing their contributions. It's really very hard, particularly if the... Oh, uh, hang on. I should say this before we go. The reason you'd want to prove... Yes, is for the property settlement. So ultimately. if you can prove you've made more contribution, you can make... Uh, yeah, you, you can, can make get more money in your property settlement. To get a bigger share of the property pool. Okay, glad we just covered that up. And if you don't, under uh, contribution, don't understand the contribution side of things, you can listen to an episode where yeah. mum explains all of that. It's called contributions before, during and after. There you go. Um, okay, so mum, okay. how can you 
get your extra contributions to be recognised. To be recognised. Okay, it's a it's a tricky thing mm-hmm. because if you've been working and doing and you bore the children or, or you're doing the majority of the work and the other person stays at home, home, whether to mind the children or because they just don't want to work or can't work, then the court will still recognise the person who stays at home, that recognise their contribution as contributing to the, the family. So it's that's very hard to say, no, but I did more. Mm. You know, So you're going to really have to have a look at your schedules, emails, where you've, or things where you've bought all the groceries, where you've done all the drop-off and pick-offs of the kids and stuff like that, pick, mm. pick-ups of the kids. But sometimes the person who stays at home can simply say, I was the homemaker and I was the uh, stay-at-home parent. And under Mallet's case, uh, M-A-L-L-E-T-S, it might be double T, about 1979, the court said, Contributions from a person that stays at home are not to be uh, diminished or considered less than financial contributions from someone who goes out to work. Mm. But I don't think the Family Law Act ever envisaged someone who goes to work and still does a lot of the children's stuff and still does most of the housework, Mm. you know, because that's not a typical role that was that in happened the in days. the 70s. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, it's good. They are. We'll talk later in a later episode about the shake-ups that are happening in the family mm-hmm. life because this is very hard to deal with. Traditionally, the person that stayed at home, you think of your old sitcoms and things, you know, dad comes home, they bring him his slippers and his whiskey, the kids are all hairbrushed, they give him a newspaper and then mum cooks dinner. That was considered, of course, supporting that person to go out in the workforce and make money for the family. Mm. But but these days, that's not, not happening. How it's working. No, it's not always so, happening. So when trying to prove your extra contributions and get them recognised, I guess you would be trying to do what what other people do if they were the homemaker yeah. and prove those non-financial contributions through, like you said, yeah. there's kindy pickup registry. Yeah. If you've got after school care, you yeah. could sign them out. You've got all the registry proof of that. Yeah. If you're the one who does the groceries, all of that, you can try and prove that. Yeah. And then the contributions that you've made that are financial, they're easier to prove. They are. They are. One of the things that you can do if you can't prove that your non-financial contributions were greater, mm-hmm. Maybe you need to prove that your exes will contributions, non-financial contributions were much less. Mm. So if your ex-partner, for instance, gives you their bank statements or credit cards and they've been down at the club most of the day, you can use that to collect like a pattern of behaviour oh. where they weren't really contributing. They just weren't working. Yes. And it's capacity to work, you know, it's the capacity to Well, own. that gets us into the next mm. bit. So if you I know and when we I know we have members and listeners who's who have partners who they're separated under one roof or they desperately mm. want to get rid of them but they don't know how and they have they've got qualifications they can work but they just choose not to because it's a lifestyle choice I think that's right and wh- how does that play into property settlement well the weird thing is if a it's really awful. If a woman decides to not work mm-hmm. and stay home and, and be a stay-at-home mum, keep the house, if, especially if there are kids, then those contributions by her are, are regarded usually as equal to the income earner, breadwinner yeah. contributions. It's different, I think, now where you've got daycare as a traditional thing. School starts a lot younger. There's after-school care, before-school care. Then if you've got someone sitting at home who actually has capacity to work and they choose to not work, then I think that drops their contribution. And again, you would show that by their skills they've got, any job offers they've had and rejected. Mm -hmm. Uh, Particularly, you would need to show that they were not engaged full-time in looking after the kids, dropping off and picking them. And that's where those credit cards are brilliant. If it's showing them having lunch at different places, in the middle of the day or or not being somewhere at three o'clock. Or playing or, golf. Yep. Or and... emails to you. Don't forget uh, when you say, please, could you pick the kids up today? Yeah. I won't be able to make it. I think our listeners know when they're doing all the heavy lifting. Mm. And so there's just that way that sort of oblique, but documents are everything. Mm. Um, photos and things are everything. Text messages, God bless them. And Facebook posts, yeah, because text messages. I guess it must be so frustrating if you've got, or if you're in a coercive control relationship, yeah. and if you are, please call 1-800-RESPECT. Yes. Call, uh, if you're in an unsafe situation, call triple zero. But if you are in a coercive controlling relationship, you might not even have noticed 
that it is unusual that you are doing everything and the pressure is put on you to look after the children, the pressure is put on you to keep earning money. And for some reason, maybe they've manipulated you to think that they they can't work because they're sad or what, whatever it is. Mm. And you haven't even sat back and thought, wait, why am I doing all of this myself? Or maybe you have finally sat back and realized that. And that's why you're trying to get separation. So they don't work, but they can. Can you can you worry? Like, uh, uh, are some people stuck in this situation where they're worried, well, what will happen to them? I'm kind of responsible to look after well, them. I, I are think, they like another child? Uh, you know what? That's a description that a lot of women use. Mm. It's like having another child. Some of the reasons I think that people do it for much longer than you'd think they would is because they don't have time. They don't have time to think. Mm. You know, uh, I think someone on our socials uh, for a parenting goal for looking after herself would like to be able to go to the loo on her own. Yeah, you know? yeah. And we just take it on board. We don't and we get just... time to reflect and go, wait, yes. why is this happening? Why am yeah. I doing all the work and they're doing nothing? And it'll often be couched in terms of I'm supporting her. Career career. Aren't I a good a husband? I'm not stifling her career, but actually it's really a kind of a form of slavery, I guess, where mm. they're making you do all the work. You need to ask yourself that. But as to your question about uh, do you feel responsible for this other person, you may well do. But, you know, unless they've got some reason, real reason why they can't work, it's not your problem. So, so legally, are you responsible for them? Well, spousal maintenance may be payable by you, but they'd have to go to court to get it. Mm-hmm. So legally, you're not really. I think the best thing to do with someone like that is give them plenty of notice mm-hmm. that this is going to happen. Generally, they won't move out if they're... So we'll talk about that in a yeah. minute. But yes, yeah, so so that the reality is we all go to our graves one person at a time. You mm-hmm. are not tied to this person. Yeah, The children are. Mm-hmm. But you are not. Yes. And so there are plenty of support services, at least in Australia, to support somebody. And you may support them briefly until they get a job or retrain, but not forever. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So that so with spousal, what you're saying is you you know, a, as we would expect if the roles were reversed, yep. if the man's making all the money that we would expect that you would support the woman or the other man until they can get a job, mm-hmm. until they can start to support themselves and you've had your property settlement. Yeah. So what what tips do you give to those people? that are they've got their partner or their ex-partner on the couch doing nothing and they come home they look at them and go oh roll their eyes go to their rooms and come out cook dinner get the kids to bed go back back to bed wake up in the morning go to work what should they be thinking about or what can they do what action can they put in to to get these people out and get get their Uh, life new oh okay so um spousal maintenance like you said it's payable only and only if two conditions. If and only if the person whose maintenance is under consideration can't look after themselves and they look at their capacity to earn, okay. not their income, right? And secondly, only if you can afford it. So if you have to leave the house because horizontal won't get off the couch mm-hmm. um, and get a new place for yourself, then you probably don't have enough money to pay support for them as well. You know? Well, what about if they own the house and they're paying the mortgage as well? Yes. Well, from the court's point of view, Mm -hmm. the person who stays in the house should be paying the mortgage. Right. But when there's a massive difference in income, i.e. hardly anything because they're setting up their own business or whatever it is they say they're doing, Mm -hmm. then you, the court may call on you if you can afford it to contribute to that house. Usually the court says whoever stays in the place pays for it, but unfortunately the banks don't see it quite that way and it's your credit rating as well as theirs. Can you sell the house? You should. If you're not able to stay there and they can't afford it, yes, you should sell it. And the court will make interim orders now to sell a house and hold the proceeds of sales. So all the money you get stays in someone's trust account while you fight over who gets what of that. But at least it gets that liability off your chest. Mm, Yeah. So you can get... If you're in a coercive control relationship... And you can get a domestic violence order or apprehended violence order against mm -hmm. them. You, Mm -hmm. You have to have your proof, of course. Then the court may issue what's called an ouster order, O-U-S-T-E-R, which would tell them they have to leave the house within seven days. During that seven days, I suggest you and the kids go somewhere safe Mm -hmm. until they leave. Sometimes you can't stay in the house because you just know you won't feel safe there or you actually may not be safe there. So think about that. But we certainly can take steps to get them out of the house. But the only thing you can control really is you Mm. and your kids, you Mm. know. So you might have to take that step 
and the rest will sort itself out usually. Okay, so what about joint bank accounts? The person who's working their butt off, looking after the kids, they're probably providing that income to the other person because they're not working or, or they're, they're not working, not working much. enough or much. So, you know, that bank account's there with the money in it mm-hmm. and then, I don't know, I, I've seen a trend with our members that maybe with a catch wind that, there's some there's trouble oh, in love yeah. and so money starts going missing yes. or they buy Apple iTunes cards and Scooters, all sorts of things boats. and it's all kind of just how do you how do you protect yourself what can people do to protect the assets particularly like if this person who's at home is a massive gambler I've, yep. I've had messages people Absolutely. saying they started to gamble all the money I don't know what to do or they're big spenders or just just mooches <clears throat> what can you do okay so you can take steps to protect those assets. The court doesn't have a problem with you taking steps to preserve your assets. Mm -hmm. However, uh, if you're separated under one roof or haven't quite decided to leave here, that's going to be the signal that they get that you're you're going to move out or, or they're going to move out. So if you do something with that joint asset, like withdraw it all, or withdraw most of it or put it into another bank account in your sole name in another bank, then that will be the sign to them that, that you're going. If you if you aren't quite at that position yet where you want to leave and you're worried about the money going missing, you can either like try and suggest joint signatures for a while mm. or you could try and get your salary paid into a different account and just what's absolutely necessary for the mortgage and so forth to go into that joint account because the number of people who say to me, oh, oh, I'm not going to, that's joint money, I can't have that. And, uh, you know, the next day their ex takes all of it. Mm. So, you know, you can take it and then you can give it back if if they kick up a fuss. There are some rules about that. For instance, if it belongs to a company or a business, you can't do anything that might damage the business. But and everything mum is saying is just general, general education. General education only. Always please go and seek your own independent yeah. legal advice. So basically, mum, what you're saying is you are these people that we've heard about that are just mm. sitting on the couch, Homer mm-hmm. Simpson style, but at least he had a job, at not looking after the children, not doing anything, gambling, whatever, mm. drugs, maybe whatever, I and think, you're making all the money yeah. and you're doing all this. Then on top of that, you've got to try and do all this legal stuff. Yes. Well, to protect things. Yeah. I think you need to be, once you make the decision, then the other steps, and we mentioned it in our little first yeah. steps in the course, the other steps have to come quick, quick and fast because before you know it, they may have taken the money out of the account. Yeah. Or whatever. So if you are in a situation right now where you're still trying to figure out how to do this, or you're at the early stages, get your ducks in a row, understand Understand the law, know what you're supposed to do and start getting it ready before you let them know? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And often separations happen unexpectedly. Yes. Right. You might be limping along and you're thinking, oh, well, probably it'll be all right, be all right. And then it's usually of an evening or a weekend mm. when your visitors arrive or whatever, something happens and next thing you're separated. Yeah. And you need to know what has to be put in place immediately. Mm. It, it's really surprising how some people, if they see the writing on the wall that you might be wanting to leave, they take those steps and pre- presumably, and in the situation we're talking about now, they've obviously got more time to think about it than you have because mm. you're trying to do everything at once. They can, if it's domestic violence, they can get an ouster order to get them out. Usually, yep. Usually Try. you can, can consider doing bowels and maintenance for them. So mm. at least they're out and it's temporary until property settlement yep. is done. Usually. Yep. There's child support as well. What do you do about child support if you're the one who's making all the money and you're the one who's looking after the children? Do, does child support come into it? Well, child support's more for the future, isn't it? It's yep. not dur- during the relationship. So the court, the child support agency will look at the reality. I just thought of something when you were talking there about this ouster order. Do you know if you happen to be in the Federal Circuit and Family Court of Australia, FCFCOA, so if you're in court Mm -hmm. under the Family Law Act, there is provision for sole occupancy of the house. Okay. And the court will, if you ask, choose which one of you can stay. Right. And so it's a bit of a gamble because... What if they choose the other person? Mm. You know, and of course, you might not want the house because, like I said, it's domestic violence. Well, can I ask as well? Mm. What if you like? I've heard of a lady who had a couple of houses, mm. and she was paying the mortgage on all of the houses, mm. and it was making her go broke, and her 
her ex-partner who they haven't done anything but settled financially or anything she's just constantly paying this could could she just sell the property you know you could find us on instagram facebook and tiktok we're there waiting for you right now if you want to get more out of the divorce course all you have to do is go to the divorce course podcast at facebook or tiktok or the divorce course on instagram there we share bite-sized pieces of information and bite-sized inspiration and motivation to help you through this difficult time come and join our community and let us know you've joined we'd love to see you there could she just sell the property? Absolutely. Even without their permission? No, but bring an order, bring a court order. You need, if you're in that kind of just barely keeping your head above water stage, you need to bring it to an end. And yeah. selling those investment properties would be a big relief. I think the court would make those orders yeah. uh, simply because he obviously can't want all of them yeah. and uh, the court will lower your the stress on you and and you know, if you're heading into defaults and so forth, yet the court will order on an interim basis uh, the the sale of those houses and put the money in trust. And so what about child support then? I know we were talking about that. So how, how do people approach that? If they're making all the money, their ex isn't doing anything, but they're also not looking after the children at all, mm. do they still have to pay child support? Well, child support's for the future, so it's not like a contribution that we we consider during the relationship. And it's actually not the future, it's the reality of now. Mm. So if you have the children 100% of the time, no, you don't have to pay child support to the other person. There's kind of a sliding scale. It's a calculator that you can see on the Child Support or Services Australia website. And the lot, many... The more nights or days that your ex-partner, it's nights, the more nights your ex-partner has with the children, uh, the more likely it is that you will pay child support. And a common misunderstanding is if we, if I hate people talking about it like this, if we go 50-50 with the kids, it just sounds like dividing up a, a meal or a cake. But mm. if you both end up with the children 50% of the time, then a lot of people think there's no child support payable. But mm. that's not the case because if one of the people has a much higher income than the other person, then they are very likely to be paying some money over to the other person who isn't earning as much. And the rationale for that is that the children shouldn't go from sort of a luxury to a slum, I guess, mm. between the two houses. So they're trying to give the children a good standard of living in both environments. So what do you say to those, and I know we've done an episode on it, uh, uh, your children being used as chess pieces, mm. but are you noticing in some of these cases the, the, the father or the you know the mother who's been at home that's had nothing to do with the children, no bedtimes? I know we had a, someone message in and say they've, they've all of a sudden said they want 50-50, but before they never wanted anything to do with mm -hmm. them. What do you say to that? Because is how can you counteract that? Is there things so you can like educate to help your ex understand that's not going to get money because if that's, you know, what what do you say to those people that are probably, dealing with that? It, but it may well do. So, again, you need to have your evidence that up until this time uh, there was no suggestion of it um, and that it's only since they've got wind that you're leaving that they've decided to become mother of the year or father of the year mm. um, and and do the bedtime so that they can say, I always put the children to bed, I always read them stories and you need to be able to say, however, look, in these days these were his hours he worked and you might even have a text from him uh, eight o'clock at night, I'm coming home now, or is there anything you need? So you can just prove that thing. And again, your daycare, childcare records and the signing and parent teachers and things like that will show your extra involvement. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, mum, look, I think I know we've only kind of touched on it, but yeah. I think we should go into the personality types as well. Yes. We're talking about gold diggers. Yes. And look, some of them might not be. Maybe there are. Like if what if the person that they're sitting on the couch at home who doesn't work has a disability or a mental illness or, you know, some valid reason why they can't work? What well, happens then? Well, it comes down when, you, when you're assessing future needs yes. under the property settlement, uh, family or property settlement, future needs is again based on capacity to earn. Mm -hmm. And so if that person can produce medical records, if you know darn well they can't hold down a full-time job mm -hmm. and being an idiot isn't a reason for not holding down a full-time job, <laughs> but, but, you know, for, <laughs> but if they've got some sort of um, physical or mental impairment, mm -hmm. uh, or they don't have qualifications, mm. uh, then, you know, they are going to get more of the property settlement than their contributions mm. were. 
So and I guess you can look at it as a way of, well, at least they'll then be out. That's right. So, and if you are the main breadwinner, you are, you are the highly capable. Mm. And I think in coercive control relationships that those type of people, that's who they go for. They go for very capable, very independent, very, I've got all of this. wealthy. I can yep. control Confident. this. I got this. I can do everything. Mm-hmm. They're the ones they're looking for so they can suck the life out of them and suck the money out of them and suck the glory or whatever it is they want to get out of you. I think like, that's... I've seen so many women being stuck in those situations and it's, and, and a lot of the ones that write into us, it's, it's different jobs, different, uh, situations, but it's the same personality mm. capable with it women who, are, or, or men that are then just being pulled down and, and basically become shells of themselves. Mm. And the longer the relationship, mm. the more that can happen mm. and the more, the less inclined then people are to fight back. So, but you've got to remember, remember what you were like yes. before you met them. You were capable. You were amazing. You, you can make lots of money. You can do all of this. So try and remind yourself what was I like before? And, and, and I guarantee you, I've seen so many people get back to Blossom. that. Yep. They do. Look at you, mum. <laughs> yes. Look at you, you know, and so, so you can, you can turn it all around and you can get it all back and start again. And, and I think that mindset of all this money, all this superannuation, all this, everything, I'm going to lose it. You, it's a trade-off. Yep. It's getting, it's, it's getting the mooch off your it, back. That's right. And mm-hmm. then you can start again and you don't know what's going to happen around the corner. You could, start a whole new business. You could get an, a, a, an even a degree, better job, a, better another do- degree. Yep. I mean, mum, you became a lawyer. Yep. So, you know, the, the potential out there is huge for you and you've got to remind yourself of what you were like if you are in those coercive controlling relationships. And I guess that's touching on the manipulative and controlling it is. Uh, category. Hmm. So if you are listening today and you are holding on to that money and worrying about it, just remind yourself, money sometimes, you can, you, Money comes, money yeah. grows, yeah, sometimes and you can do you, it again. Yeah, sometimes you could, you'd need to just cut your losses mm. if that's what it's going to take yeah. to get rid of them. Um, but that's general advice. General advice. We're not telling you to cut your losses and give them everything. But I can give you some specific advice. Okay. <laughs> My little mantra for years was mm-hmm. a, a, a song. And um, I can't sing, but it was. It said, "I got along without you before I met you. I'm going to get along without you now." <laughs> yeah, that's right. And 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 there's some lovely glow ups, divorce glow ups, oh. uh, where people show what they looked like before and what they looked like after. But I think a lot of it is it's what inside. were you doing before mm. and what were you doing after, and that transformation. And I guess if you're if you're living with a physical person that is making you miserable, of course you're not going to be doing your best right now. Now, but yeah. once you get them gone and mm-hmm. that positive energy is back, you will you will bounce back. So those people are going to manipulate you, make you feel sorry for them. They're going to try and tell you that they can't do anything, but they're adults. Yes, or that you can't do these things. Yeah. Because, and you've, if you've been the longer you've been listening to them, mm. the more their sort of dialogue becomes your own inner monologue. Yes. So I like people to write down a list of their attributes as if you were writing a resume. Yep. Yeah, you know, what you're capable from a human of, and all the things that you can do. Yeah, yeah. Okay. What about avoidant? Because I know there's going to mm. be some avoidant people who, so they've sat down, they've had the talk. All right, I'm really sorry, but this isn't working out. It's mm-hmm. time to break up mm. and move on. And the avoidant person, the guy sitting on the couch playing his PlayStation. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then that's it. Nothing. What, what, what advice or what general education can you provide to the people that are dealing with those people? Well, there's a lot of ways uh, to try and deal with them, but it is a very common problem mm. because some people are just terribly comfortable and they don't want anything to change. Mm. Uh, so sometimes you can recruit their mates or their mum or their brothers <laughs> or sisters. That works sometimes, Yeah, you know. I so knew, how I to get married in 10 days. <laughs> that new that- one. No, there's a movie called How oh. to Get Married in 10 Days, but <clears throat> how to get Divorced, divorced in 10, in 10 days. days. Okay, recruit everyone. Okay. Yeah, get someone to have a talk to him. You might have to do everything for the poor old avoidant person, like find an apartment or flat for them, mm. um, find out how much it costs, put in an application for them, do everything except sign the blooming lease to get them to go. Yeah. Or you go. Mm. which is often the more convenient thing and they'll still be on the couch in a month's time. But remembering if you do go, that can cause a lot of trouble with dealing with setting the house up for sale and all of that yes, sort of stuff. Yes, yes. You're going to still be relying on someone who's who has no incentive. Mm. I think we should quickly touch on the manipulative and controlling. If you do get, manage to get them out of the house, mum, yes. uh, can you change the locks? 
in case they come back. General advice only. So not it's not advice, yeah. general yeah. education. General education only. We put our disclaimers. Usually yes. Okay. Because you then become the tenant of the property, even if he's on the mortgage, even if his name's on the deed, mm-hmm. you're you've got the same sort of status as a as a tenant mm-hmm. and he can't just keep coming in and out. Yeah. Um, then also it's an invasion of privacy if he does. The longer you're in there on your own, the more the longer it or the better your claim to that house is. Now, if they think they should be in the house and you should get out, they may go to court to seek a, a sole occupancy order and you may lose that, mm. particularly if you've got more money than them. Yeah. It might be that it's more sensible, convenient, it's more possible for you to move out mm. and set yourself up again than it is for them. And I hope that no one or none of our listeners are the type of people that would, you know, kick someone out so they've got nowhere to go, but you oh. can find somewhere for them to go. Yeah. Or you can make sure they've got a family member to stay with. You know, you're not, Bring you're not a villain. Yeah. You're not the money bags villain, but yeah. you are trying to protect your boundaries and your peace and they are not your responsibility. No, that's right. They're grown people. Mm. So even calling a friend to come and support them is good, mm-hmm. you know. Okay. So what about high conflict? So you basically tiptoe around this person because you know if you say anything that's going to turn into a fight, mm. you're probably so busy going in and out of the house, doing everything all the time. And that, have you seen those time lapses where the yes the person's just sitting there and then the other person's running around in the background, yes. cleaning, washing up, just, just the kids, blah, 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 going yeah. to work, coming back, and they're just sitting there and playing PlayStation? If that is them, but if they say anything, it's a fight. Mm. Uh, is there any special tips you could give some education on on dealing with that? I, I think normally that's the situation where you leave. Yeah, yeah. It's if, uh, you know, I think otherwise it's going to end up probably in court. Mm. Um, and then uh, if you're scared to tell them, you mm. know, if, if you don't want the fight in front of the kids or whatever, then you can leave them a letter. Yeah. Um, do it while they're overseas or away on holidays or something. I, I think as long as you don't strip the house of everything, yeah. I think you'll still be able to negotiate with them when they get back. Mm. But if you're with someone and you're scared to tell them that you want to separate, mm. then I don't think you have to tell them you're, you want to separate. I think you get yourself out yeah. safely because yeah. you don't need any more of that. No, and if you are afraid, again, please ring um, 1-800-RESPECT mm. or triple zero to get some help or go and see a local police station, ask them for some advice on, you know, the best way forward. But I know that there's domestic violence services around Australia that will help create a safety plan. Yes. Because making a safety plan before you do it. And I think that the big message here is for any of this is planning. Yeah. I mean, you're a capable woman. You've been doing planning and I'm sure you're a good planner if, mm. you know, if you are that successful and doing so well running everything, you can plan this as well mm. uh, before you go, before you tell them so that it is a smoother ride when you finally do. Because it's so, it's not often the person who is living in the beautiful house, not paying anything or contributing anything to the kids or whatever, they don't often want to separate. Yeah. <laughs> because they're... Why would you? Yeah. Their nest is feathered they're and they're living their best lives. Yeah. Yeah, so and you're doing so everything for them. You're yeah. a living slave. <laughs> and don't be surprised, and this is probably not really a legal thing, but don't be surprised if they immediately fall into the arms of someone else who will mother them and look uh... after them and... and, and have a sob story from them and, you yes, know, yes, yes, and you'll become that mean old ex. But yeah. that's all right. You, you know the truth. You <laughs> and you can on. just feel sorry for the poor people that <laughs> fall for it the second time or the third time yeah. or the fourth time. So, Mum, and then that leaves amicable. So yes. if you are, you're the money, money maker, you're the breadwinner, mm-hmm. you're looking after the kids, you're doing everything, you're doing all the contributions, you're doing absolutely everything mm-hmm. and they're just I don't know what their excuse is, but whatever They're their excuse easy going, is. happy go lucky people. So, what do you do? Well, I think you tell them. Yep. Give them a few straight facts. Yeah. Uh, tell them um, that uh, either they go or you go. Mm. Uh, talk about some options if they're amicable and that this and telling them that doesn't knock them out at amicable. Mm. Uh, then you can work together to work out do we need to sell the house? Should we Airbnb it or something? Should we take in a border? Should we both move out of the house and rent apartments and put the house on the market and all of that? So if it's if it's um, amicable, you have really the whole range of options available to you. Mm. Remembering, though, uh, that the reality will hit them if they haven't been working. Uh, I think you need to say to them, you are going to have to get a job. But there's this new trend called boy maths, and I think that it, it, 
I think they would have to sit down and realize, oh, wait, I've been doing, when they say I want 50 50 percent custody, but mm. they don't do anything with the children, mm. that's called boy maths. Oh, okay. And, and when they want, um, you know, they say they contributed and they didn't, mm. you know, it's the, it's their head telling them a narrative that hasn't happened and then trying to push that narrative through the courts. Yeah. And, and I, I think the best protection for everybody, mm. if they are going through this, is start getting that evidence together to say, okay, if you are doing everything, mm. get some proof because they're guaranteed going to say, well, I was at home with the kids. So, yeah, that's right. So, this episode is targeted for people who have a really unproductive, unhelpful ex, yep. I guess, or soon to be ex. Yep. And one of the things that helps a court make sense of allegations, say this, but you're, you're saying, he'll say, I did everything. I was home with the kids. You'll say, I did everything because when I got home from work, the kids weren't fed, bathed, or there's no dinner on that. I did that. I got dropped them off at my mum's in the morning. Da, da, da. So there's this um, that's that's the sort of people we're talking about, that yep. sort of big gap yep. because a lot of men are wonderful fathers, yep. really. Yeah. Uh, but that when you've got that big gap, don't just say, no, but I did everything. Hmm. Um, in your affidavit material, what's the judge going to do with that? They're going to go, you're yeah, sure. I don't know. Who who do I believe? Okay, so. But the, what, the, you, they can rest on the default proof that you were at work. Yes, so I know. Of course they looked up got, the children. They've got your time it's sheet. guaranteed. Oh, you, of course yeah. you must. So so what you need to do is, is paint a picture for the lawyer on the other side maybe and for the judge if you end up in court and, and, and say, you know, like this was my typical day. And start with what you up at six thirty, and then put what he did at six thirty mm. or whatever. Did this, did this. Put load of washing on on Tuesdays. I do this. Put your schedule there, and mm. just show how very busy you were and how when much you weren't at work. You were That's making. right. Yeah. And if you can do a parallel one for him, mm. um, that would be interesting. And I think I'd do one for him and say, on the other hand, your client yeah. <laughs> did this. He was yeah. up by eight every morning, rain, hail or shine. He ate the breakfast that I'd cooked for him. Yeah. Uh, kissed the kids goodbye as I walked out the door with them dressed for school. And when I picked up the kids after work at five, I came home and he was still home. Like that's an extreme thing. But I think if you can show your typical days, mm. then that really gives some meat on the bones. And that could potentially could, yep. up your percentage. That's in the right. Property. Yeah. And, and it will, you can mostly you can get an affidavit from someone who minded them before school or you can get the before and after school records. You can, you know, you can get all sorts of things that show what your contribution was. Mm. And if he then has only, he can only rely on, well, she went to work every day and I was home with the kids. Well, if you're home with the kids and they're at school, it's not much of a contribution. No. no. Mm. All right. So we're trying not to offend anyone, but yeah. we have had so many people ask. Yeah. So if that's you, if you feel like you're in that situation, please try, uh, go and listen to the contributions episode. It's really early on. I'll put it in the mm. show notes, but please try to think about what can you do to prove your contributions and also what you know, look to the future, look forward and be excited about, you know, getting that monkey off your back, really, that, that heavy weight. Because I think one of the big problems with this is if the court isn't satisfied mm -hmm. that this person made no contribution or your contribution to the home and parenting was greater. If the court's not satisfied with that, then your case just becomes a normal future needs, uh, you know, contributions equal, whatever it is, mm. uh, whatever in other money comes in and you may lose even though in your heart you think I, I worked so so hard mm. you know I got sick working so hard even though you think that and it's your truth and it probably is the truth don't be surprised if the court doesn't look at that it's something that's very hard to prove and it might be that for the sake of your peace of mind you might go and see a lawyer and say, look, here was what happened. What are my chances of that having any impact? And if it's only 5% or something, think about that in terms of your entire property pool. Mm. So if you've got a half a million dollar property pool uh, and it's only going to be a 10% adjustment even, it's 50000 it'll cost you that to go to court. You might just want to give them the money. Just comfort yourself that that's the last money they'll ever get. Yeah, but definitely go see <laughs> yeah, a lawyer because you need to and look get at, your own mm, advice. Well, and also ask your lawyer how to protect yourself from uh, spousal maintenance claims going forward because yep. that when I say that's the last money they ever get it might not be if you if they say they can't work uh, anymore so maybe some of the money you give them 
is for spousal maintenance and you make that clear in your documents under yeah. Section 77A. So, yeah, you will need to see a lawyer for that. Okay. All right. Well, I hope this has helped maybe mindset shift and give mm. some hope to those people that are out there and we know you are out there because you've written into us. So yeah. thank you, Mum, for and your And sorry time. to our lovely men. And we do we do love all our lovely men. And, and the flip side is there are a lot of women that do stay at home and they're homemakers and they look after the children or even if there's no children, they, they stay at home, they look after that, they do all the, you know, dinners mm. and stuff. So don't don't take this as a reflection on us saying, oh, you didn't work, so you don't mm. deserve it. We're just trying to help those people that have those people that sit on the couch and do absolutely nothing and are taking advantage of the situation. Yes. So that's it. That's All right. Thank you so much, Mum, for your Thank time. Thank you, Laura. And thanks, everyone, for listening. Bye, everyone. If you found this podcast helpful, we'd love it if you could rate, review and subscribe. By doing so, you are spreading the word to help someone else just like you. Lynn would like to remind you that this podcast is general advice only and you should always get legal advice in relation to your particular situation. And remember that the Australian laws may have changed since recording.